Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once again, my brothers and sisters, we declare the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying Alhamdulillah. And we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions, by saying, Was salatu was salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. My brothers and sisters, beautiful episode of supplications from Revelation. We're looking at Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam today. Sulaiman alayhi salam is one of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whose father was also a prophet and they were kings as well. They were rulers and at the same time they were prophets of Allah. So they had a lot, they had power, they had kingdom, they had wealth, they were bestowed with so much by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet they called out to Allah, they cried to Allah, they relied on Allah. They did not let their wealth make them think I'm not reliant unto Allah. Their wealth did not make them arrogant, did not make them haughty. Their authority did not make them haughty. They were just, they ruled properly. Where they made a mistake, they sought the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're going to see this. These two, Dawood alayhi salam, who was the father, and Sulaiman alayhi salam, who was the son. I want to start off with Sulaiman alayhi salam because the nature of the dua that he made included his father. If we look at one of the most beautiful du'as that he made, uh, you see, he, uh, Sulaiman alayhi salam, was bestowed with favors by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What were these favors? One of them was, he had control over the wind, he could speak to other creatures of Allah, he had control over so much, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him power, authority, he could go from place A to place B within a split second, no matter how far it was, he would be carried by the wind. In his army, he had mankind, jinn kind, animals, birds, fish, etc, etc, the mountains, the clouds, whatever else it was, the wind, he had a lot. And this is a dua of Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam that he made. Uh, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, Rabbil firni wa habni mulkan la yanbaghi li ahadin min ba'di innaka anta al-wahhab. Oh my Rabb, forgive me and grant me kingdom that no one after me would get, for indeed you are the giver. You are the giver of gifts, you know, Al-Wahhab. This is in Surah Sa'd, verse number 35. So, Sulaiman alayhi salam is firstly seeking the forgiveness of Allah, and then he's asking what he wants. That goes back to a lesson we always learn. You want something, seek the forgiveness of Allah to begin with. You want something and you're such a sinful person and you don't want to turn to Allah, that's when you perhaps may not be doing the right thing. So what you need to do, what I need to do, no matter what we've done, no matter how much sin we have been involved in, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Seek forgiveness. Ask Allah to forgive you and then ask Him what you want. Tell Him to alleviate the suffering you may be going through, whatever else you want. Here is Sulaiman, a prophet of Allah, a king, saying, Rabbil firli, oh my Rabb, forgive me. Forgive what I've done, right? Rabbil firli, wahabli and gift me with, grant me a gift. You know, a hiba is actually a gift. And wahhab is the one who gives gifts, the giver. The, the term, the, the, the name of Allah, al-wahhab, is normally used regarding the gifts of Allah. When someone doesn't have children, they want children. When someone, for example, doesn't have something, they want it. When someone wants something, uh, you know, uh, sustenance, etc., wealth, whatever else. This is a dua. One might ask, why is Sulaiman alayhi salam asking Allah something that seems outwardly material? Yet in one of the episodes, I remember saying that the prophets of Allah did not ask Allah for something material. Look at this dua. Habli mulkan la yanbaghi li ahadim min ba'di. Grant me kingdom, ownership, dominion that none after me would get. Okay. Innaka anta al-wahhab. You indeed are the giver. You can do it. For you, it's nothing. I mean, like I've said before, if, if you ask a billionaire for five dollars, he might give you five million and tell you, go ahead, you know. <laughs> it's amazing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's example is far higher than that. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى The examples of Allah are far higher. They are the highest. So 
He asked for it in order to be able to use what Allah gives him to call people towards the deen and the evidence of it is when the Queen of Sheba witnessed what Allah had given Sulaiman. She knew that this man is a prophet of Allah together with being a king and there is no way that he can be wrong and I'm accepting and I'm uh, coming into the worship of Allah alone. So that goes to show that when he had wealth and when he had kingdom and authority, it was not in order for him to boast, for him to brag, for me to have, for me to be famous, for me to be powerful, for me to be wealthy. No, it was for the sake of Allah and the deen. This is an intention matter where we go wrong. We want things, I want this job because you know I can have money and I'm going to be powerful and I need to be here and I need this money and I need to marry this person and I need this and that. A lot of the times it's got to do with ourselves. Very rarely does the issue of jobs, positions and wealth have to do with the deen of Allah. You need to correct your intention. So Sulaiman alayhi salam says, Rabbi ghfirli, oh Allah forgive me. Forgive me and grant me. So Allah says immediately after that dua, the next verse, verse number 36, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَسَخَّرْنَا لَهُ الرِّيحَ تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ رُخَاءً حَيْثُ أَصَابٍ we caused the wind to, to move at his instruction. سَخَّرْنَا لَهُ الْرِيحِ تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِ رُخَاءً حَيْثُ أَصَاب You know, wherever he wanted it to go, it would go, the wind. Imagine you have control over the wind. You made a dua to Allah and you have control over the wind. Subhanallah. And that was just one of the gifts Allah is making mention of here. And so many other gifts. Then Allah says, هَذَا عَطَاؤُنَا فَمْنٌ أَوْ أَمْسِكْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ This is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can either be generous or hold back. Allah gives without account. When you understand that Allah is the giver, you begin to receive. Sulaiman alayhi salam made the dua. And what happened? He was able to communicate with all the creatures of Allah around, the birds. He spoke to them. He communicated with them. Imagine the chirping of a bird is actually speech. Would you understand it? Some people may get the gist. Sulaiman alayhi salam could speak back, <laughs> subhanallah. Uh, the ants, the ants, subhanallah, amazing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something so powerful Regarding the story of the ants, when Sulaiman heard the one ant telling the rest of the ants to go into their houses so that Sulaiman does not trample upon them. And so when Sulaiman stopped his whole army in order to protect the ants, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was watching and uh, rather than making him arrogant, you know, he smiled and you know what he says? He made a dua to Allah. He thanked Allah. رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيَّ وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَاهُ وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ فِي عِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحِينَ سورة النمل Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so verse number 19, that he smiled and then he says, Oh my Rabb, grant me the ability to be thankful to you upon the favors that you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents. And help me, grant me the ability to do good deeds that will please you and join me or enter me by your mercy among those who are your righteous worshippers. Make me from among those who are your righteous worshippers through your mercy. That's a dua of Sulaiman alayhi salam. A lot of us, unfortunately, when we receive from Allah, we forget Allah. When the Almighty has bestowed us with so much of gifts, bestowed upon us His favors, what happens to us? We tend to forget Allah. We drift from Allah. We become haughty, arrogant. It becomes a competition. Let's understand this competition with one another is very dangerous when it comes to materialistic things. When it comes to goodness, Allah says, فَاسْتَبِقُوا khayrat." Compete with one another to do good, not, not to, uh, to become haughty on earth. No, but man is distracted. Man is distracted often and sometimes the pious become the opposite as a result of their race towards materialism. And their competition with one another makes them dirty in their values. They begin to lose ethics 
and morals when it comes to business because it becomes cutthroat. They want and they don't want others to have. This is dangerous. How will Allah answer your dua when you are so selfish? If you would like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to respond to you in a positive way, you need to eradicate selfishness. Learn to be very generous, learn to be giving, learn to be concerned about others. Sulaiman alayhi salam, he was concerned about the ants, the ants, the fact that he could speak with them. He didn't brag and boast and show that, ah, wow, look guys, come, 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 let me show you. You know, in our times, we probably would want to boast if we knew uh, something or a language or uh, if we had a bit of a uh, qualification and we knew something others didn't know, we might decide to boast and to show off and so on. May Allah protect us. Sulaiman alayhi salam knew how to speak to the ants. It humbled him. It humbled him so much that the, the one major interaction that happened, and there must have been so many other interactions that we don't know about, but the one that Allah chose to tell us is a major one, where the whole army stopped for a group of ants to go back into their houses. And Sulaiman alayhi salam, Allah says, فَتَبَسَّمَ ضَاحِكًا مِّنْ قَوْلِهَا When he heard this ant, he smiled. He smiled at what he heard that ant say. وقال, and he says, رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيَّ وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَاهُ وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ فِي عِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحِينَ I've already translated that, but I'm going to say it again. He says, O oh my Rabb, O oh my Lord, grant me the ability to be thankful to you for the favors that you have bestowed upon myself and my parents. And uh, let me grant me the ability to do good deeds that will please you and join me, make me from amongst those through your mercy who are the righteous worshippers of yours. Now, let's all use that wording, that verse, that dua, that supplication to call out to Allah. Often, remember verse number 19 of Surah An-Naml. Open the Quran, read these verses, learn them, use them to call out to Allah and thank Allah using these verses. Rabbi awzi'ni an ashkura ni'matak. It's a long verse. Learn it, write it down. You imagine how proud you would feel. And when I'm saying proud, I don't mean pride as in arrogance, I'm meaning happiness. How happy you would feel to be allowed to use the exact wording mentioned in the Quran that Sulaiman used alayhi salam or another prophet of Allah used. What a great honor. What a great honor. We need to make an effort to look into it and to learn it and in that way we will definitely be earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is a dua of Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam. My brothers and sisters, I want to move on to something very, very powerful. Many people get married and they don't have offspring because Allah chooses what He wants to give, who He wants to give. We spoke about it in a previous episode when we spoke about Ibrahim alayhi salam and we said he was not bestowed with children until he was very old. And Allah gave him Ismail alayhi salam, Ishaq alayhi salam when he was old. But He thanked Allah. And he kept on calling out to Allah. Here is another example, Zakariya alayhi salam. Uh, made mention of in many surahs, one of them is uh, Surah Maryam. The surah named after Maryam, it starts off, Kaf ha ya ayn sad, that surah. Immediately Allah says, Dhikru rahmati rabbika abdahu Zakariya. The mercy of Allah upon his worshipper Zakariya. Make mention of it. Subhanallah. Amazing. What was the mercy of Allah upon Zakaria? He didn't have children. That was the mercy of Allah. He did not have children initially. That was the mercy of Allah. Because through that, he kept on calling out to Allah and he says, Oh Allah, I haven't lost hope. He was old, his wife beyond menopause, according to the narrations. And he didn't lose hope. He says, Oh Allah, I still have hope in you. You are the Lord. You are the giver. You can give. I know you can give. If it's meant for me, it will come. Subhanallah. And I haven't lost hope in your mercy. Imagine so many people on earth are suffering silently. They don't have offspring. May Allah grant them offspring. We pray for them. And those who do have offspring, may Allah make those offspring the coolness of your eyes. When Allah knows that 
it's better for you not to have children because you might lose your children in your lifetime in a way that would depress you so badly. He doesn't give you those children. Sometimes Allah gives you a child and takes the child away from you at a very, very young age in infancy or just post birth, etc. Remember, you've given birth to a child. That child is yours. The child is waiting for you in paradise. It's never, ever a waste of time or effort. You'd rather have the child and let the child have a name. And then the child is waiting for you, going to plead with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you as a parent who was deprived the company of that child in this world. And Allah will give you the company of that child in the hereafter. And that child is not going to be in hell because it was just a child. So that's an amazing way of looking at things. It's a favor of Allah. You lost someone, you lost a child. Allah knows why you lost the child. People say, why did Allah take away such an innocent child? That's Allah's mercy. Allah knows what His mercy is. We who have these brains that we think are so sophisticated are actually people with not so sophisticated brains in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't even know the unseen. So remember to be pleased with the decree of Allah. Allah knows why He is doing what He is doing. Sometimes people don't have offspring because Allah knows if we're going to give these people offspring, perhaps this, uh, the, the child might be uh, challenged in a way that you may not be able to cope. Ask those who have uh, children who are challenged somehow. May Allah make it easy for them. That too is their paradise. When Allah knows they will cope, He grants it to them. When Allah knows that they will manage. لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا Allah does not shoulder a burden upon someone beyond that which they can take. Remember, so if you are shouldered with a burden, that burden is something Allah believes, Allah knows that you can take, you can handle it. You need to strengthen yourself, be strong, carry on going, don't give up. So my brothers and sisters, that dua that Zakaria alayhi salam kept making, what was it? So in one place in the Quran, Allah says that Zakaria alayhi salam says, Rabbi habli min ladunka dhurriyatan tayyibah innaka anta al-wahhab Oh, innaka sami'u dua Oh Allah, grant me from you a pious offspring, a pious offspring, for indeed you are the hearer of the prayers. You've heard my prayer, you heard what I've said, you are the hearer, you hear better than anyone else. Now the question is, did Zakaria alayhi salam want children just for the sake of being called a father who has sons and so on? No. He makes it clear here in Surah Maryam. Uh, he says, إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيًّا Remember when Zakaria called out to his Rabb quietly, silently. He didn't make an issue out of it. He called out to him quietly. He kept on calling out to Allah quietly. That's a way of dua. Brothers and sisters, you need something? Keep on calling out to Allah quietly. Get up when a third of the night remains during the blessed time of the Hajjud, just before that crack of daybreak. And you need to know, call out to Allah, sorry, the crack of dawn. Call out to Allah at that time and quietly repeat your dua. It's powerful. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. So, Remember when he called out to Allah quietly. What did he say? قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي وَاشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبًا وَلَمْ أَكُنْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيًّا Allah says, Zakaria said, O oh my Rabb, you know my bones have become weak and my hair has become grey on my head. But I am not losing hope and I have never lost hope in the dua that I make to you. لَمْ أَكُمْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيًّا I'm, I've never lost hope regarding the dua I'm making to you. I think with us, we need help. We need help. This is a prophet of Allah. He's calling out to Allah for years, literally years. Imagine they are old, elderly couple. That's what the Quran says. He's already gray. His wife is old. According to a narration, he, she is barren. Basically, she's got to a point of menopause. And you know what? He still says, oh Allah, I haven't lost hope. I've never lost hope. I still, I still have this hope. It did not drift him away from Allah. Some of us, 
We call out to Allah, call out to Allah. And you know, after a certain period, we say, well, that's it. I start worrying. What's, what's going to happen to me? What's going to happen? I'm going to be all alone. Well, you're not alone. Allah is with you. Allah who created you shall provide for you. You need to be strong. You need to force yourself to think positively and you will take it in your stride. The day a situation comes in your direction, you will seek the help of Allah and deal with the situation. No point in worrying about the future and dying out of stress and anxiety just because you don't know what's going to come when something that's going to come might be far better than what you expected. Don't you have conviction in Allah? Aren't you convinced? Don't you believe in Allah? Look at this man. He's saying, oh Allah, I'm convinced. I know. I'm calling out to you. I'm never going to lose hope. I have never lost hope and I will never lose hope. But now he's making mention of the reason why he is asking for offspring. وَكَانَتِ امْرَأَتِي عَاقِرًا فَهَبْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيًّا He's speaking about how he is concerned about the carrying of the message of the deen after him by children and he is worried about the progeny that's going to carry the deen and the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after him. And he says, so therefore, O oh Allah, grant me a male child who can be an heir, who's going to inherit all this goodness that you have bestowed upon me. You know, when Allah has used you to do some good work, you'd love to have someone carrying on with that good work. Wouldn't it be best if that was your own child who followed your footsteps? Subhanallah. Sometimes it's not our own children, but we would love it to be our own children. So Zakaria alayhi salatu was salam is saying here, that, oh Allah, these are the reasons. Allah knows the reasons, but He is mentioning them. There's no harm in mentioning reasons, you know, communicating with Allah much more and so on. He says, يَرِثُنِي وَيَرِثُ مِنْ أَهْلِ يَعْقُوبِ وَجَعَلْهُ رَبِّ رَضِيَّ You know, He can be an heir of myself and of the family of Jacob. You know, all these prophets that you have sent down, one after the other, all from the same family, coming down, coming down. Uh, this would be a continuation. And also, uh, he, oh Allah, make him from among those you are pleased with. Make him from among those you are pleased with. The child is not yet born. There's no news of a child. The wife is not yet expecting. But Zakaria alayhi salam is making a dua that, Oh Allah, when you give me a child, make him a pious child. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Imagine uh, those who are not yet married and they're saying, Oh Allah, bless me with pious offspring. I always say that to people that make that dua because that is such a powerful dua that it includes a good spouse. It includes the fact that you're going to have children. So two things are already a given. And then it means that child will be pious. Because if I say, oh Allah, grant me pious offspring or grant me a pious child. And I'm not even married yet. If Allah says, I've given you your dua, I will need to get married in a good way. I will need to have a spouse who's decent because then I'm going to have to have a child thereafter. So it's not going to be like I'm childless. May Allah grant all those who don't have children, children. I mean, but... It's so much included in one thing. That's why when we say, Oh Allah, grant me Jannah, it includes so many things in the process. But sometimes we don't realize this. So this was Zakaria alayhi salam making such a beautiful dua. Uh, at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, you know what? We, we granted him. But this dua was made in so many different wordings, like Allah says in Surah Al Anbiya, Wa Zakariya idnada rabbahu rabbi la tadarni farda wa anta khayrul warithin. Remember when Zakariya called out to us and said, Oh Allah, don't leave me singular. You are the best of those who are the heirs and grant heirs and so on. So grant me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ يَحِيَا وَأَصْلَحْنَا لَهُ زَوْجَهُ We definitely answered him. We blessed him with Yahya and we uh, purified, cleansed and we granted a cure to his wife. Subhanallah. That was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, we looked at the dua of Zakaria alayhi salam. I'm excited about the next episode where we're going to continue and go even beyond this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease until we meet again. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.